We have read in the introductory Bible verse, Daniel praised God and he understood that God sets up kingdoms and removes kingdoms. He set up kings and remove kings. Just one short statement from Prophets and Kings, page 535. It says, Every nation that has come upon the stage of action has been permitted to occupy its place on the earth that the fact might be determined whether it would fulfill the purpose of the watcher and the holy one. Prophecy has traced the rise and progress of the world's great empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. With each of these, as with the nations of less power, history has repeated itself. Each has had its period of test. Each has failed. Its glory faded. Its power departed. The spirit of prophecy here mentions the great world empires, beginning with Babylon. Babylon, a great city, was known as the Golden City. And you remember in the image of Daniel chapter 2, the head of the image was of gold. And Daniel, interpreting that image the dream of the king, he said, you are the golden head. Babylon was a very beautiful city. It was known as the uh, terrible of the nations, recorded in Ezekiel chapter 28. It was known also as the praise of the earth. Jeremiah 51, 41. When they built Babylon, the enemy put in the mind of the builders that that city should be built in such a way that should remain forever. The city was crossed by the river Euphrates. Huge gates were placed at the entrance and exit of the river. High walls were erected around the city. And one of the seven wonders of the world was there the hanging gardens of Babylon. And the prophet Daniel, when he was talking to Nebuchadnezzar, who had the dream of the image, he said, but after you there will come another kingdom. Not as glorious, not as rich, not as beautiful, represented by the chest, Medo-Persia. God sets up kings and removes kings. God establishes kingdoms and removes kingdoms. And as we have read here, the purpose why God establishes a kingdom is that 
it might be determined whether it would fulfill the purpose of the Watcher and the Holy One. Nebuchadnezzar went through great and undesirable experience when he saw the beautiful city and he exalted himself he had the dream of a tree you remember in chapter 4 of Daniel and the tree would cut down and Daniel interpreted he said you are that tree you will be cut down and the prophet uh, counseled him that he should repent humble himself before the God of heaven and for a time he accepted that advice but one day he looked from his palace to the city and he said is this not the great Babylon that I have built with my own might my own power and what happened in that moment he was taken out to the field for seven years was living with the beasts of the field and after that <coughs> his reason came back to him and then he was truly converted and he praised the Lord of heaven Babylon was not to remain forever but how did the end of Babylon come let us open our Bibles in the fifth chapter of Daniel and we read the first four verses Daniel chapter 5 verses 1 to 4 Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes his wives and his concubines might drink therein then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem and the king and his princes his wives and his concubines drank in them they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Belshazzar was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And We read that he, Belshazzar, he made a feast. And then in the feast, he drank wine. And what happens to a person when he drinks much wine? He loses his reasoning capability. And then he did not think that would be too much to bring the sacred vessels that were brought from the temple. In Second Chronicles chapter 36, we read Second Chronicles chapter 36. Let us um, 
Read verse from uh, verse 15. And the Lord God of their fathers sent them by his messengers rising up at times and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words, misused his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till his, there was no remedy. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with a sword in the house of their sanctuary, and had no compassion upon young men or maiden, old men, or him that stooped for age. He gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon. And verse 20, And them that escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon. the sacred vessels that were used in a temple, perhaps carrying the blood in the temple, or carrying the water. All these vessels were consecrated and should be used only for sacred purposes. But because of the sin of the people of Israel, God permitted them to be taken to captives to Babylon. But many of them were killed or destroyed. The temple was destroyed. And the vessels of the temple, before its destruction, they took, all these took to Babylon. And together there were many that were taken captives and among them remember there were four that are mentioned by name a matter of fact others are mentioned also by name but these four are mentioned in the book of Daniel Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego they were taken to Babylon and the Bible informs us that Belshazzar, he commanded that these sacred vessels be brought forth. And then they were drinking, all of them. They drank wine, and then they praised. Praised who? The gods of gold, of silver, of wood, instead of praising God. And then in verse 5, Daniel 5, we read, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand, and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote in the king's palace in that revelry now something strange occurred on the wall there was a hand and the king saw the hand. And the hand was writing. What would you say if this phenomenon would occur here? There appeared a hand there writing. But the importance is what is written. What was written? Suppose 
that some hand will write down the name of each one of us here and say this and this and this. How would you feel if your name would be written there and after your name a sentence of condemnation? So this is how the king felt. We read here Verse 6, then the king, king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the points of his lawns were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. In uh, Prophets and Kings, I read on page 523-524. Little did Belshazzar think that there was a heavenly witness to his idolatrous revelry. that a divine watcher, unrecognized, looked upon the scene of profanation, heard the sacrilegious mirth, beheld the idolatry. But soon the uninvited guest made his presence felt when the revelry was at its height, a bloodless hand came forth and traced upon the walls of the palace characters that gleamed like fire. Words which, though unknown to the vast throng, were a portent of doom to the now conscience-stricken king and his guests. Hushed was the boisterous mirth, while men and women seized with nameless terror watched the hands slowly tracing the mysterious characters before them passed as in panoramic view the deed of their evil lives. They seemed to be arraigned before the judgment bar of the eternal God, whose power they had just defied. Where, but a few moments before, had been hilarity and blasphemous witticism, were pallid faces and cries of fear. When God makes men fear, they cannot hide the intensity of their terror. The king tried to read the writing. Now remember that the king was not an Israelite. He tried to see if he could read, but he could not read, and he could not understand. So what did he do? He called all the wise men of the kingdom, the astrologers, the soothsayers, all of them, to come and read and interpret the meaning of four words only. A matter of fact, there were only three words, but one was repeated. And uh, Prophet and King says that the king 
in despair, he turned to the wise men of his realm for help. His wild cry rang out in the assembly, calling upon astrologer the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, to read the writing. Could they read, interpret? No. They were not wise. They did not have wisdom. But there in the kingdom, there was one wise person. And immediately you may think, oh, that was Daniel. No, that was not Daniel. I'm not uh, referring yet to Daniel. Let me read to you from Youth Instructor. The Youth Instructor, May 26, 1898. There was in the palace a woman who was wiser than them all. The queen of Belshazzar's grandfather. Who was this woman? Was the queen, Nebuchadnezzar's wife. She was wiser than all the others. In this emergency, she addressed the king in language that sent a ray of light into the darkness. And what did she say? When he saw that the king was disturbed exceedingly because the wise of Babylon could not read and interpret the writing, he said, she said to him, let not your thought trouble. There is a man in your kingdom that can read. And then she recalled what happened in the past. Let's read from verse 8 to 12. Daniel 5, 8 to 12. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known the king the interpretation thereof. Then was the king Belshazzar troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thought trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father, the king, I say thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. That wise woman, she had an experience. She knew what happened to her husband. She knew all that Daniel did. And she recognized in him there is a different holy gods, she said. He can read and interpret. So now they call Daniel. 
And the king started to um, um, speak to Daniel and uh, wanted to uh, exalt him, flatter him, and uh, he said, well, if you can do that, I will give you a lot of gifts. I'm not going to read all. You know the story. <coughs> offered gifts, offered a beautiful garment, and he said, you will be the third in the kingdom if you can do it. And Daniel, he stood before the king unmoved. Youth instructor, May 26, 1898, says, Daniel was not awed by the king's appearance, nor confused or intimidated by his words. Daniel said, let thy gifts be to thyself, he answered. And now Daniel reveals to him the great sin that he had committed. And he said, Thou his son Belshazzar. Uh, let me read all. It says, I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. And thou, his son Belshazzar, has not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought to the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are thy ways, thou hast not glorified. And now Daniel reads the writing on the wall. And the writing was four words. This is the interpretation. The turning to the heaven sent messenger on the wall, the prophet read, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Farzin. The hand that has traced the characters was no longer visible. But these four words were still gleaming forth with terrible distinctness. And now, with bated breath, the people listened while the aged prophet declared. I'm reading in Prophets and Kings, page 530. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, Thou art weighing in the balances, and art found wanting. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. This, um, these words are 
from verse 4 to 28 in Daniel 5. These three words, mene, tekel, perish, or paris, means simply, mene is numbered or counted. Tekel, weighed. Paris, divided. Only three words. Numbered, weighed, divided. But what was numbered? Daniel interpreted. God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Will come to its end. Thou art weighed in the balances and are found wanting. And God has divided your kingdom and given to the Medes and Persians. God has his plan. God directs the movements of the history of the earth. And you know, in that very night, the Bible says here in verse 30, In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. But how could the Chaldeans come into the palace of the king? There were high walls. But you know what happened? The Medes and Persians, they diverted the river Euphrates. And in that night, the gates of the river were forgotten to be closed. And this happened, it was prophesied that this would happen. In the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 1. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. I will loose the lawns of, the, of kings to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. In that night, they forgot to shut the gates. And through the uh, gates, the river was dried up. The Medes Persians, they came in. And what happened? The Bible says in that very night, the king was destroyed. And the kingdom now came to its end. It was passed to the Medes and the Persians. It was in prophecy. Cyrus would come, and the gates would be open before him. The prophecy was fulfilled. It was not just a coincidence. It was directed by God. Babylon came to its end. And you know, the prophet Jeremiah says that the place where Babylon was would be the inhabitant of animals, remnants animals, and it would be an astonishment. And Babylon never should be rebuilt. And kingdoms passed. But the important lesson that we should learn is that that hand that was writing on the wall is writing today. I want to read a few statements from Spirit of Prophecy. 
Testimonies for the Church, Volume 3, 370. God is weighing our characters, our conduct, and our motives in the balances of the sanctuary. God is weighing our characters, our conduct, our motives. It will be a fearful thing to be pronounced wanting in love and obedience by our Redeemer, who died upon the cross to draw our hearts unto Him. God has bestowed upon us great and precious gifts. He has given us light and the knowledge of His will, so that we need not err or walk in darkness to be weighed in the balance and found wanting in the day of final settlement and rewards will be a fearful thing a terrible mistake which can never be corrected once it's pronounced thou art found wanting that can never be reversed. Young friends, shall the books of God be searched in vain for your names? The appeal that the servant of the Lord makes to the young people. Testaments to Ministers, page 440, says, God's claim is placed on one scale. God's claims. One scale. And man's character in the other. And by the balances of the heavenly sanctuary, every man's doom is fixed for eternity. Revient Herald, July 28, 1891. Now is the time when the Lord is testing characters, weighing moral worth in the balances of the sanctuary. Oh, let us seek the gold tried in the fire. Let us seek the white raiment of Christ's righteousness that the shame of our nakedness do not appear, and anoint our eyes with the heavenly eyes self, that we may discern the working of God, and not be found, groping our way in blindness. Signs of the Times, May 25, 1891. Angels of God are watching to see the development of our characters. They are weighing, weighing moral worth. And may the great day of God reveal the fact that we have not been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And from the book Sons and Daughters of God, page 355. Perilous is the condition of those who, growing weary in their watch, turn to the attractions of the world. While the man of business is absorbed in the pursuit of gain, while the pleasure lover is seeking indulgence, while the daughter of fashion is arranging her adornments, it may be that in that hour the judge of all the earth will pronounce the sentence, Thou art weighed in the balance and are found wanting. Youth instructor. May 1, 1854. Young friends, which will you choose? To live a life of self-denial here 
act out the religion of Jesus which you profess, be singular in the eyes of the world, and reap life everlasting? Or will you put off the preparation, live half-hearted in the cause of God, merely having the name of a Christian, a form of godliness, and thereby dishonoring your profession, and then in the day of God's wrath that is just before us, be weighed in the balance and found wanting, shut out from heaven and lost forever. Which will you choose? The servant of the Lord asked. The hand is writing today, not on the wall, but in the books of heaven. And what is written there? As the spirit of prophecy appeals to us, we should today make our preparation. That when the uh, judgment will pronounce the sentence, instead of saying, Thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting, we may be pronounced good and faithful servant. Thou art, thou wert faithful in little things, thou shalt be placed over many things. May God bless us that we may understand that God is at the hand. God is at the head of the events. He leads according to His will. And when the investigation comes to our names, may we be free from that sentence, weighed and found wanting. It's my wish and prayer. Amen.